All right. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about um, purchase order repair and just updates to purchase orders in general. Um, this is something that I really wanted to talk about because um, I know that this is something that takes a little bit of getting used to, especially when districts first come over on to redesign, because some of the um, things that you're able to edit or how you might need to edit, this is different than classic. Um, so one of the things with classic, um, you know, we kind of have talked about it in different trainings, um, you know, when you migrate, um, what some of those differences are and what the difference specifically here that we're thinking about is how totals are calculated uh, related to encumbrances um, and basically how these transactions are being used by the system to, to give those totals and to create reports. Um, now in classic, everything was, um, oh, let me, um, in classic, you know, everything was um, sort of calculated within the month that it happened. And then um, a total was put, you know, on the account to say, here's what the encumbrance is for this month that was used for reports. And then when the month was over, uh, the reports were run, they were archived, maybe a copy was taken of the um, information. And then essentially everything was cleared for the new month to start. Um, so now that we're in redesign, redesign is keeping track of all of these transactions, the dates that are used, the information that is on the transaction and still exists on the transaction can be used to then go regenerate reports um, that were from previous months. You know, you could go back to three months ago and run and see what was currently outstanding. So that's my little ramble about the differences. Um, that's why all of this is important, but just keep that in mind because I know that, you know, it is something that being different from classic, uh, we get a lot of questions on, I'm sure you do. So um, that's kind of why I want to talk about this today. Okay, um, so now first we're on our wiki. This is where I always like to start. And let me zoom in a little bit here. Let me make sure I'm on my page. Okay, um, so basically everything that we're gonna be talking about today is going to be um, on one page. So use as our documentation. And um, if I go into transaction and purchase orders. So um, all of the different pieces that we're gonna talk about today um, are documented within here. So um, I'm not sure that I'm gonna come back to this again uh, specifically while we're talking today, but um, just so that you know if you want to um, you know, go refer to this later. Okay. All right, so let me get a little zoom going on here too, okay. Um, so the page we're going to be on, um, at least where we're going to start, is transaction purchase order. Now, when I'm talking about making updates to POs, um, I kind of thought about it. I'm thinking, okay, so what are what information do I need to know? Because it's not always going to be the same. Like, there's no one blanket. Like, this is always how I'm going to make an update to a PO. It really depends on you know a what I want to do, but also uh, what's what's the situation of the purchase order. Um, so the three things that I would um, ask myself about the purchase order I want to change would be: um, has it been invoiced or paid on? Um, is it in an open posting period? So what does the date on that purchase order look like? And um, what is the current status? Is the purchase order invoiceable or um, is it closed? And um, with those three things, you know, I don't have a specific, you know, if this, then that, but we're gonna talk about those things as we look at the different kind of updates we can make. So the first kind of update I'm going to talk about is editing the PO. And in order to get to where I can edit the PO, um, I could either view a purchase order. So use this eye icon to open it. Um, and then I have a view. 
um, in this one. Um, so if you can edit, if it's available to edit, this will be highlighted and it's be like lit up and available. But if it's not like this one, it'll be grayed out. Um, or I could also click on this little edit tool and this would give me a pop up where I could choose to either edit or amend. Um, and we'll talk about amending in, in a minute so we can talk about the difference. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and edit this one. Now, when you edit a purchase order, so um, it must be new and it must be in an open posting period. So that's where some of my questions come into play. So if this has, you know, any payments on it, um, then it's not new. If the um, date is from a prior month and that month has since been closed, then, um, then it doesn't qualify to be edited. Um, and the reason that, you know, these are um, kind of strict parameters as far as when you can edit is because editing has the most that you can do. Um, I would, I kind of think of editing as like, I just created this. Um, I'm I, you know, need to go right back in and um, update something. So I, I feel like this is happening, you know, this is happening soon after um, you've created the purchase order. And one of the interesting things here is like, I could actually even change the purchase order number when I'm editing. Um, I can make it, you know, say it didn't end up in the series how I wanted it to. And, um, you know, I want to change this to a completely different vendor, or I'm sorry, purchase order number that, you know, hasn't been used yet. I could change the PO number. I can change the date. Uh, the date that I enter does have to be, you know, in an open period. Uh, this is the step where I could change a vendor. Um, you know, my additional header information. And then as far as the items, um, we're going to take note of this because once we go to amend, this looks a little bit different. Um, but as far as the items, so, you know, I have full flexibility here to change quantity, to change the price and to change the account. And then once I've made any edits that I want to make, I would just go ahead and save that up. And then you're good to go. Oh, I did want to note something here. Okay, let's go in and edit again. Um, so the other thing you can do here is you could delete line items um, off of this purchase order. So um, if you need to delete one and add one when you're editing, you can do that. Um, I will say though, uh, we have seen something that's been happening recently where districts are going in and deleting all of their line items and not adding one back. And they think that's going to close the purchase order. And it does not. So like if I deleted both of these and then saved this, um, then like, and right now it lets you do that. We have a JIRA issue so that it's not gonna let them do that anymore. Um, but that was something that was reported to us pretty recently. And so we have that on the list um, to take care of. Uh, the good news is that if they do that, there's a way to get it closed. Um, you just have to add back a line item and then close it out. Uh, but just so you know, that's not like, um, that's not recommended. That's not what they should be doing is, you know, actually editing and deleting both, I both items off of there. Um, there is a way that you can close using the amend option. And uh, we'll see that in a minute. So um, yeah, just, just a little like a uh, heads up tip uh, on what not to do. <laughs> okay. All right, so, um, you know, and I usually say this at the beginning, but of course, like if anybody has questions along the way, uh, feel free to, um, you know, unmute and ask a question or throw it in the chat. So um, I've got, you know, I've got eyes on that. So I just wanna make sure I mention that. <laughs> um, okay. So let's move on to amending a purchase order then, because this is where it gets, um, we have a little bit more rules, we have more restrictions. 
Um, so if I come in and we could go to the same one, um, when I click my edit option, I do have um, either this edit or this amend. And I do get, um, you know, a little note here that tells me about, you know, when each one should be used. So the edit option should only be used if the purchase order has not been sent to the vendor. Again, we had full flexibility to edit, you know, pretty much anything on there. We could even change the vendor. Um, so that would be, you know, something you would use that when it hasn't been sent out. If the PO has already been sent, the amend option should be used. Um, this also, you know, applies like if there was a partial payment on the line or, you know, some, something has happened, um, then there are, are other reasons that you would need to amend. Um, one thing is once you amend, so like this one, I had the option to edit or to amend. Um, once I amend this once, it's going to check this amended box. Um, and you know, the reason I would amend is to say this has been sent to the vendor. So uh, once I amend once, I can't go back and then edit it afterwards. So once you amend, now you can only amend going forward. So just something to note because, you know, as we see now, we have less, less flexibility as far as the fields that we can update. So, um, you know, if it really is something that you are just meaning to edit, you want to make sure you do that the first time around. Okay. Um, so we can see here now as far as what can be amended, you know, we have more limitations. So, you know, we can update the description, but we can't update the purchase order number, date the vendor any longer. Um, and then as far as the line items, we have a little bit less flexibility um, as far as what we can update on these line items. One thing, and this is noted, actually, let's go to our documentation for amending. So there is a note um, that explains what I'm about to show here um, in regards to uh, quote modifying uh, an item uh, when you're amending. So you'll notice here, so say, you know, my line item two, okay, you know, I, I, I'm trying to change this, but all I have access to update is my um, description. So what I would do to modify an item when I'm amending is I would copy this item and then I could go in here and put in, you know, what I need to put in. And I could cancel this first item here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to come back to these dates. We're going to talk about this in a minute. Um, but let's just look at, you know, this um, modify process first. So the X over here canceled my original item. And then now I have the copied item that has like my updates to it. So that's the way that I would um, change a line item when I'm amending. And then I could save this up. Again, my amend box is checked now. So that tells the system that this was amended. I can, you know, amend it again if I need to but um, I can't edit it anymore. And then this is what it looks like for my modified items down here. Okay, um, let's go ahead, I'm gonna amend again. The other thing, uh, you know, that is important here, so Going back to kind of what I talked about at the beginning is, you know, the system is really using these transactions to be able to appropriately calculate the encumbrances and, um, you know, to determine like when it should show certain figures on the reports. So, you know, I mean, we're looking at edit, we're looking at amend, you have so much more flexibility on edit, you know, you could just like change that line item 
you know, why, why is this so much more complex to have to do, you know, to have to go make another item um, and do this when you're amending. And the reason why is because this is specifically how it is allowing the system to account for encumbrances. Um, so I'm going to try and talk through this and hopefully that um, helps here. So now, you know what, let me, let me actually, I believe I have the same one from March. Okay. So Yes. Okay. So here's this purchase order. And this one is dated in March of 2021. So this is from a couple months ago. And when this purchase order was created, I looked, um, I went and added a hundred dollar encumbrance to, um, well, so this is the same account. So I added $200 to this account. If I were to go run um, a purchase order report for March, you know, it would show these open encumbrances and it would be associated with these accounts. Uh, if I were to go look at the account page, this $200 would be included. So if I were to go ahead, oh, and you know what? I hope March is open right now in my test, in my test database. So let's go do this. Let's look at this in March is closed. <laughs> um, so yeah, remember when I said it has to be in an open period? Normally March wouldn't be open uh, because I'm in my test land and I was playing in here earlier. <laughs> March is accidentally open, but normally wouldn't be. Um, okay. All right, so where are we at? We are on, um, I believe it was this one. Yes, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, go through this process to amend it again, and we're going to edit one of these line items. Now, what I'm saying is that, um, you know, I want to change the income or no, let's, let's change the account. So a um, hundred dollars of this should have actually gone, um, you know, had a different account on one of these line items. So I'm going to go ahead, go through my process. I'll copy that. I'm going to select a different account. And then what I would do is I would cancel my first one and I'm going to get this pop up. Okay. And before we do that, um, I want to point this out. So when I add my new line, I have an issued date here. This issued date is really important. And it's the reason that we're doing it like this. Um, because what this is telling the system is my original purchase order was created in March. These charges were added. Um, but now what I'm doing is I'm adding, so this account, I'm accounting for the encumbrances um, actually being switched to this account starting on today's date. And then if I wanted to take them off of the old account because I'm like changing it, then when I cancel, this canceled date is also telling the system, okay, stop showing the encumbrances on the old account, start showing them on the new account as of today, because that's when I made the change. And the reason that's important is because if I were to just, um, you know, like edit this, uh, basically, like, so if it were to just let me change it, and this is associated with March, then um, any of the reports that I would, if I were to go back and like run a report for March after I've changed it, that wouldn't match what's in my archive. And so this is basically like why the, um, you know, the posting period rules are strict. Okay. Do we have any questions on that? You know, we're kind of talking through so just a question, if you wanted it to go back, so would it be like a reporting situation? Like if you were to put the date of 320 in there, would it let you do that? And then start reporting on that? Only, so March would have to be open. You'd have to go open the posting period in order to do that. And you could, you know, you could, but what that's gonna do is that's gonna mean that technically the encumbrance is associated with that account we're mm -hmm. different now from March. So right. if you're reopening that, you might want to, you know, rerun the monthly reports for March and any, you know, period yeah. in between. So okay. that can get kind of messy sometimes. You yeah, know? I just want to make sure just mm -hmm. for, you know, reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
so yeah yeah if i did want to put um if i wanted to type over this date i could um but again yeah as long as it's in an open period so say you know if i still had may open at this point and i'm still working on closing may uh then i might be wanting to make this change in that month um so that can happen the other thing you know with this too is you know i showed this cancellation date this pop-up right here is brand new they just added this within like i think it was like the last release um and the reason this date is important to you know have the ability to enter in here uh, so what it used to do is it used to just use today. It used to just use whatever the calendar day is. And now you can enter um, what you need to. And um, what was happening is, especially around the fiscal year, people were going in and they were trying to cancel a line item, um, you know, off of a purchase order, basically to close it. So if they're cleaning up their purchase orders at the end of the year, you know, maybe they're not adding a new one, they're just um, removing a line with this process. If they're doing it, um, say like it's technically like Jan or I'm sorry, July 3rd and they're cleaning these up, but they want them closed for their prior year, uh, you know, before they switch to their fiscal year, they will need to make sure they're entering a June date. Um, you know, if they're canceling items this way. So that is another important note. Um, you know, this new uh, date pop-up is important. Okay, let me see. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to show is, okay, nine, four. So let's go ahead and look at this one. So, um, oh, you know what? I think I changed. Oh yeah, okay, this is what I wanna show. So this purchase order, um, if I look at my line items here, I can see that I can't cancel these items. And the reason for that is that they've been paid on. So I have this payable amount, I have invoices sitting out there. And if there have been invoices created for one of these line items, then I'm not gonna be able to amend and cancel that item because I've paid on it. So, um, I mean, essentially like if you've already used the encumbrances that's just saying i can't go back and cancel the original encumbrance if i've used it okay all right so um i think next we're going to look at the po repair that new po repair option itself um do we have any other questions about amending before we hop over to that Alrighty. Okay. So actually, you know what? I lied. This one I am going to go to the documentation for. I know I said I wasn't really going to be in here. But um, so here's the section for this. And I have a couple notes uh, before we actually look at like the use of this option. Um, so what this option does is it allows you to change the purchase order date, the vendor, or the account code. So some of those things that weren't just straightforward in changing. Um, maybe with an amend option, um, as long as the charge doesn't have um, any payments, which means disbursements. So it can have invoices, it just can't be actually posted to the disbursements page. Um, and let's see. Um, and so the other thing to note here is that the intention of the, this option is that it is it's updating the purchase order, um, the purchase order items, and any associated payables. So you know if we're looking at like okay, um, I want to change my account code. We just saw how we could do that with amending. So there might be a situation where amending is easier. Like you might not always be using this repair option, but if you have, you know. Um, a purchase order with multiple line items with the same account code and there's been a couple invoices on it and you don't ha want to have to go like track all those down um you know in order to update them you could use this repair option instead um the other thing to note is that this also does adhere to the posting period rules so kind of like what we talked about with amending um and like changing dates around and stuff is um 
if I want to go change something on a purchase order, um, that's in this example, that's from January, but January is closed, I do need to reopen it in order to use this option to change it. Um, so that is notable in here. Okay. So let's go um, nine two. Okay, so again, I'm opening opening this in view. And along the top here, I have this repair option. So I can click and I get this nice little um, pop up window that has the different tabs here for the different things that I can update. Um, and then um, I had another note to mention here that changes for each tab are processed separately. So the current tab you're working on, when you click update, uh, the change will be made. So um, with that, so basically like, if I wanna change the account, I'm gonna enter this account information, I'm gonna click update, I get my summary. Like I'm not, so basically I wanna use these tabs separately. Like I'm not gonna say I wanna change my date to this and my vendor to this and my account to this and then click update. Like I wanna do them one at a time. Um, okay, so, uh, let me switch. Sorry, I'm switching, <laughs> switching all around on these kind of fast. <laughs> okay, so uh, date, you know, this is going to be my actual purchase order date. And um, in order to change this, I'll just type a different date in here. Again, needs to be in an open period. I, you know what, I think May is open. If not, we'll get an error. But I'm pretty sure I left May my May posting period open. So, so we want to change this to the previous month. No, nope. okay, May is not open. <laughs> but this is what it will tell them, you know, if they're trying to go backdate it and that posting period is not open, you know, then they'll, they'll get the message. It won't just let them do it. So, all right, we'll settle for June 1st. Um, go ahead and update that. And um, we'll get any like standard warnings um, that we would get, you know, in saving a purchase order. But what we really want to look at here is okay. So the date was updated for two records. Um, here's the here's the you know timestamp, and it was updated on my purchase order, and then also my purchase order item was updated um, to reflect the date as well. And if I had any invoices, you know, this is where um, it would. Uh, like list out anything else that has changed as though as the date like it's not going to change the invoice date it's changing the PO date but um, you know if other transactions were affected it would list them here and then I also have this option to print the result and basically this just gives you like a handy little report you know it's nothing too complex but if that's something that you know, the district is making these changes, you know, maybe the assistant treasurer is going into making these changes or the accounts payable person and then, you know, they need to have, uh, they just want to like print this out, put it in a folder or like, you know, give it to whoever they're working with in order to have a record of that. Okay, let's close this. And I'm kind of working backwards here because account is is the more um, exciting one. <laughs> uh, so vendor, so um, basically, again, I just would go ahead, I have my drop down or I could start, you know, typing in a vendor, um, typing in a vendor number, and then I would just pick my new vendor, click to update, same thing. Summary, I also have a print result option. Okay, and then, uh, let's see, do I have, okay, I have one that has more accounts on here. All right, so uh, this one, I don't think I have February open, but let me go ahead and look at the repair option for this. I grabbed this one just because I wanted to show you with the accounts. Um, you know, I have a couple more line items on here with different accounts. 
Um, and actually, let's look at this real quick. So I have two items that are associated with this account that has uh, the 200 um, OPU. And then I have two that are associated with the 300 OPU. So what this looks like, and um, I, I didn't find one like offhand in my test database that had, you know, like a big list. But if they're changing some, I mean, some of them have purchase orders that have like a ton of items, a ton of accounts. And that's where I think that something like this is going to um, come in handy. So what you're selecting here, and you'll notice like this is the from account. I'm not saying like I want item number five or item number 10. I actually have a list here where I'm going through and saying I want this account to change to this account. So um, and that's how I'm looking it up, at least to start. So if I come in here and I say, OK, so I want the ones that have the 200 OPU to change. Um, what this does now is it's pulling up my line items that match this account. So line item one, $7.99 for the violet cooler. Line number two, $6.99 for the large trays. So both of these pop up now. I can say, all right, I want to change this, you know, to this other account. And then I could select if I want one, um, you know, two, or if I had more, like if I wanted to select all of those and change it to the new account, I could do that um, all within this window. So you have the flexibility here when um, you're changing the account, you know, so it's not like, like the vendor and date, there's only one of them. Since there could be multiple accounts, this gives you a way to change multiple items at once if that's what you need to do. Um, and again, like once I were to update this, I could click update and it would give me my pop-up showing me everything that's been um, updated and then I could get my summary report. Um, but again, this PO was in a previous month, so I don't wanna probably uh, mess up if I try and do it. <laughs> um, Let's go back to our 9-2. So yeah, this one, I only had one account, so it was kind of boring. Um, let's go select a different one. And then I would check, update, and I would get, okay, my PO charge was changed from this account to this account. I think probably with the account codes especially is where I would want to um, you know, maybe have this report and print it out um, to save or like, you know, save the PDF, don't necessarily have to print it. Um, but I think that that's where, um, especially that summary report will be helpful. And then, you know, that changes on the line item. Okay, any questions on that? All right, so then um, the other thing I wanna talk about is uh, different options for closing a PO. So um, if you're going to close a purchase order, um, and let me come in here. I know I, I had multiple POs that were like the same one so that we could just keep looking at them. But um, since I've been kind of randomly playing, I'm just gonna clone this a couple of times and make sure we've got plenty of them out here to mess around with. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about with um, closing a purchase order is we're going to go right back to talking about that amend option. So um, if I come in here and I amend this purchase order, now this one, again, like there's been, you know, no payments made on it. I have no invoices, like nothing has really happened on this. Um, but what I could do Okay, I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna cancel this. That does cancel both line items. And then um, when I save this up, it is gonna change so that it's no longer invoiceable because I have you know nothing left. So I actually did cancel um, those two line items and it'll show as such. So that's your first option. Amend to cancel again not to be confused with editing to delete the line items. <laughs> um, this is okay, the editing to delete is not. 
because uh, because again this gives the system a way to show you know okay there was an original encumbrance and then um, I entered that cancel date which let me show this real quick um, I just clicked this status um, the eye the view under the status and um, this shows me the issued date and then the canceled date so that goes with you know what we were looking at before with amending too. If you ever need to go back and check and say you know what date was entered um, for that cancel, what date is the encumbrance basically hitting the system, and then when is it being removed? Uh, those dates are contained here. The other thing that can come in handy sometimes is you know this encumbrance impact view. Uh, so this kind of shows a similar thing. I have, you know, this was the date that the encumbrances were added, and then this was the canceled date, so those encumbrances were reduced back down. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So the other thing, um, the other way that we can close a purchase order, um, Let's see, so 29294. So if we look at this one, now this was our purchase order that we looked at earlier uh, that has some invoices um, created against it already. But right now it's still invoiceable. Um, you know, it's still, it was basically still open. Like I could invoice this again. Um, and if I invoice it, so sometimes I use this as a quick trick to see like, okay, what, are both line items open? No, okay. So I can see my first line item is still open. It had $10 remaining on it. And that's why this is still invoiceable. I could also go look at that purchase order um, on the, um, I'm sorry, on the activity ledger. That would give me, you know, kind of a quick picture of what's going on with it. Um, but what I want to do here, so um, my second way to close this is to go find the um, previous uh, invoices. And then I could change that invoice to full um, so that it would be closed. So I'm on the switch me to my invoices grid. So I'm finding the invoice associated for my purchase order number. And I want to view this. And what I can see from here is that my second line item was closed, but my first line item with the $10 remaining was only invoiced as a partial invoice. But if I do actually want this to be closed like that one, um, I don't need the $10 that's remaining on here. Um, this uh, invoice, the in, in order to do this, this invoice must be in an open period. So again, my posting period rules apply. Um, because this is going to be, um, you know, the dates that's used. If I come in here and say, make this line item full. Now, this transaction can tell the system, this is when that should be closed. This is when there should be no more um, encumbrances against that, against the PO associated with this invoice. So let's go back. And here's my invoice, or I'm sorry, here's my PO. <laughs> and so now I can see that this is um, not invoiceable anymore because both lines now have that full um, invoice against it. All right, the, um, the next way that I could close a purchase order. So uh, let's see, I think this one will do. Yeah, we had to amend on this, but we can do this. Okay, so the next way that we could close this is we could invoice it to cancel. Um, and basically, so this would be my alternative. Uh, you know, the last one we said, okay, if I can go modify that invoice and just close it, like if I had an invoice against it. Um, but I understand that people don't always want to do that because, again, the posting period for that invoice has to be open. So if that was six months ago that it was last invoiced and you don't necessarily want to have that change the 
um, encumbrance amount between then and now, then um, what you may want to do is come in here, can select any open lines, and then um, use this cancel option. This will create cancel full records for each line, um, or like each open um, purchase order line. Notice that it does auto fill my um, amount too. So I just, if I check the box and cancel, it'll um, put in the appropriate amount that uh, needs to be in there in order to cancel this, uh, cancel the line items. And so I save that up. And um, here was my purchase order. And so now this is um, canceled in full for um, all of the encumbrances that you know we had added on here. All right, so time for another note. One thing that happened and it's happening pretty often recently is um, districts are needing to kind of use this process to create the cancel full invoice, but um, we're running into situations where a district has a $0 remaining encumbrance on that PO. Like they've created their invoices, um, you know, when they've, they've paid it out, uh, they have basically used up all of the encumbrances on there, but they left it open as like a just in case I need to pay above what that original encumbrance was. Um, so if you have a situation where you're needing to come in here and or where the district is coming in here to making uh, to make a uh, cancel full and they they do this and if the amount that populates here is either zero or negative uh, they would save the invoice um, and then when they go back to the purchase order the system isn't always able to automatically update that invoice status because like the zero or negative isn't necessarily something that was like intended. Um, so the way to get around that, if you run into a district that, you know, yeah, they made a $0 invoice, PO didn't close. Um, this does take administra uh, administrator access. So you'll probably have to do this at the ITC, um, but you can come in here, go to the purchase order refresh and if you put in the purchase order number here and refresh the state, then um, a lot of times just that simple act is able to update the purchase order to not be invoiceable anymore. If that doesn't work right away, that does happen too. Um, so there is an alternate route. <laughs> um, so if it doesn't work right away, then what you would do is make sure that the cancel invoice is in the system and then you can restart your instance overnight and then you can do the purchase order refresh the next day and then um and then it goes through again this is something we absolutely have a jira issue for um so that's something that we plan to address in the future um but just for now there um could be a bit of a workaround if that's a situation that um, your districts are encountering Okay, um, and then last thing is just kind of the reverse of this. So if I want to reopen a purchase order, um, if I had a purchase order that you know had a full invoice and that full invoice is in a posting period that is open. Um, so let's go here. So I just created this cancel full invoice. Um, Let's see where to go. Is it this one? It was this one. Um, so here's my cancel full invoice. And um, I had created this to close um, this certain purchase order. I'm just checking here. What I can do is come in here and I can delete this. And then now my purchase order no longer has canceled full invoice. So it's open. I can go ahead and I can invoice that, um, you know, for whatever I need to invoice it for. Um, and 
so the other thing here is, you know, in this case, my cancel full invoice was for all of my line items that I had on that purchase order. Uh, you know, obviously, like, that's pretty straightforward. Um, if you have a situation where um, it might just be for like one, like maybe there was just one line item that was still open that that cancel full invoice was for. Uh, so that's going to reopen specifically the line items that the cancel full invoice was created for. So, um, you know, if you are trying to pan a line item, line item that was closed from an invoice, you know, that may not be your key, but it will reopen the purchase order. Um, so, uh, if you need to reopen a line item that has a full invoice associated with it, so I believe this was our um, invoice for our other PO that we looked at, and um, this was the situation where we had, you know, $10 still on line one, but we said, we don't need that, we just want it to be closed. Uh, so then if it comes back later, it's like, oh, no, I do need to spend that $10. I need this first line reopened. Um, then what I would need to do is come in here, take action to make that partial again, and then that will reopen that line item on my purchase order so that I can make another payment. You know, maybe then I go make a full payment on it um, from there. So that was 904. Um, can cancel as long as it's not posted from payables. Mm, yeah, the invoice. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure if you mean cancel or delete, but when you make a when you make a cancel invoice, so that's going to be oh delete okay yeah so if you um so someone's asking um you know you can delete it as long as it's not posted from payables so yes uh you know if you have a an outstanding invoice that, just like a regular like partial or full invoice that would be posted to um, a disbursement then yeah you can only delete that before it's been posted um, to that disbursement. For a cancel invoice, you know, that's going to be sitting out there um, like that one, since that one isn't necessarily posted anywhere. So the key there is going to be the date, the date and the posting period. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, where are we? Okay, so this um, is now invoiceable again. And if I were to invoice, I could see that um, this first line item has the ten. you know, this is what's open and I could invoice um, on that. And uh, we do have in the uh, FAQ, so uh, let me go back. And so this is just the USAS documentation in the appendix um, in the FAQ. And then I believe it is in the purchase order, yeah. We have some other information here as far as like what's the difference between edit and amend. Um, you know, how can a purchase order that's been paid, paid on be closed? Um, and so it just goes through some of the things that we talked about today. So uh, this FAQ section is a really good resource um, if you're trying to take a look, um, you know, at some of these different options. And um, again, I, I know it's not you know, super straightforward. And I know that that makes this a little bit difficult, but I hope that talking through uh, some of these different situations today and the different options that you have um, and, you know, why the dates are important, um, you know, can kind of help help you help your districts with this in the future. Um, it can really help. Thank you, Amanda. Awesome. I'm glad. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, I think that's all I got for today. Okay. All right. Well, I'll hang out for another minute in case anybody, um, you know, has anything that they're typing up. But um, if we are good to go, then I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Um, hopefully this weather stays nice and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thank you.